Dear students, in the last class, I started the lesson, the portrait of a lady. And in that class, I did the first part of the lesson. And now today, I'll start the second part of the lesson. But there is a connection between this second part of the lesson with the first part. In the first part, you know that the author spent his childhood in the village with his grandmother. And his parents were in the city. Now, the author's parents had comfortably settled themselves in the city, and so they sent for the author and his grandmother. Accordingly, the author and his grandmother went to the city to live with his parents. This shifting from village to the city was a turning point in the relationship of the author and his grandmother. In the village, we got that the author and his grandmother spent all the time of the day together. But in the city, they got the chance to meet other for, uh, for a little time because in the city, uh, the author started to go to a to an English medium school, and he used he started to go to the school in a motor bus. In the village, the author went to the school, and his grandmother also went to the school with him. But there was no need for his grandmother to the go to to go to school with him. Moreover, in the city school, the author was taught about some Western science and learning, such as Archimedes' principle or the world being round, etc. And the grandmother did not believe in those things of Western science and learning. She found it hard to believe those things. So she was somewhat distressed when the author started to go to the city school. Moreover, there was no teaching about God and the scriptures in the city school. That was one of the reasons of her uh, being distressed. One day, the author came home from school and told her that they would be given music lessons from the next day in the school. That news of, in, of the introduction of music lesson in the school was very much disturbing from, for the grandmother because the grandmother did not like music. She had a very low opinion regarding music. She thought that music is the monopoly of the of some people of the lower section of the society such and such as harlots and the beggars. She did not think that music should have some relationship with central people. So she was very much disturbed but she did not protest. She uh, accepted that very easily, but from that day onwards, she 
stopped with the author very less. Slowly, the days were passing. The author now went up to the university level. And when he went up to the university level, he was given a room of his own. So, thus, the common link of friendship between the author and his grandmother was snapped. After that, she started to spend her days in Sekalson from sunrise to sunset. She started to sit by her wheel, spinning and reciting prayers. And in the afternoon, she used to feed the sparrows in the courtyard of their city house. When she started to throw the crumbs of bread to the sparrows, hundreds of sparrows gathered around her and took the bread crumbs that the grandmother gave them. It used to be the happiest half hour of the day for her. The days were passing. The author had finished his study in the university. After that, he decided to go abroad for further studies. He thought that when he would tell his grandmother that he would go abroad for five years for his father's studies, then the grandmother would protest. But that did not happen. When he told his grandmother about that, she accepted that also with resignation. She even went to the railway station to send him off and only uh, she was praying, she did not talk with him. After five years, when the author returned from abroad, his grandmother again went to the railway station to welcome him. This time also, she did not talk with him. When they arrived home, on that day, the author noticed a change in his grandmother. On that day, when she was feeding the sparrows, she slightly got angry with the sparrows and rebuked them. On that evening, a second sense came over her. In that evening, she did not pray for the first time of her life. Instead of praying, she collected some women of her neighborhood, got an old drum. She herself bit that old drum and started to sing songs. She sang some songs that were sung as a mark of victory or when the warriors returned home 
after winning a war in ancient days. She sang for a very long time. So, the author and the other members of the family had to persuade her to stop singing. On the next day, she fell ill. The doctor came. The doctor, after examining her, told the author and the other members of the family that it was a mild fever and it would go. But the grandmother think it differently. She told the members of the family that her end was near. So she asked everybody to go away from uh, her so that she could pray without any disturbance. Thus, the grandmother was lying on her bed peacefully, praying and telling the beads of her rosary, and suddenly she died before anyone could suspect. So after her death, the members mourned for a short while and then put her dead body down and covered it with a red shroud and made necessary arrangements for her funeral. They took her dead body out of her room and when they kept the dead body in the courtyard, they saw that thousands of sparrows sat scattered on the veranda, on the floor of her room, and they were very calm. There was no syruping among the sparrows like the other days. The mother of the author felt sorry for those sparrows and took some bread and gave the birds to eat the breadcrumbs. But on that day, the sparrows did not take notice of those breadcrumbs. They did not eat and they flew away very quietly when the grandmother's corpse was carried off. So this is the whole story of the lesson of the portrait of a lady and I will explain the lesson in Assamese for your convenience later on in a next video. Thank you.